While pro wrestling is known for its hard-hitting combination of sports and entertainment, some superstars are able to take the skills that they learned in the ring to the big screen. Some of the biggest movie stars of the last decade, like Batista, John Cena, and of course, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, if you're some man all came from the ring, and when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense as to how they became such great actors. They traveled the roads, cutting promos, and essentially performing improv 360 days a year as these wrestling megastars. However, even with all that experience under their belt, there are some superstars who just failed to reach that same level of Hollywood success for one reason or another. So, my name is Grish from Wrestleology, and today, we'll be looking at 5 examples of those who, while having all the success in the world in WWE, just couldn't make it under the bright lights of Hollywood. Also fam, let me get a thousand likes please, love y'all. All right, so starting off, let's take a look at perhaps the biggest superstar to ever walk through WWE, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, while Austin became WWE's flagship performer in the Attitude Era, following his early retirement in 2003, Austin found the transfer from the ring to the big screen rather difficult. Despite landing some big movies like The Expendables, a movie that saw Austin actually fracture Sylvester Stallone's neck, Austin rarely ever featured as the leading man in any of his movies. And if he was a main star of a movie, it was more likely that it went straight to DVD. Most of what he was given didn't really help either, with his IMDb page showcasing a pretty average career. His best real movie has a score of just 6.5, and with most of his movies typically sitting at a 5 to 6 score out of 10. Again, nothing necessarily bad, but an average movie career for someone like Austin may feel a bit bizarre given the immense star power he brings to the table. And it was probably that star power that continued to land him in these roles, as from an acting standpoint, there are clear difficulties to come with working with him. Austin is just a bit too unique to play anyone but himself. His Texas drawl, badass demeanor, and incredible popular wrestling persona limits what you can do with him as an actor. Don't get me wrong, Austin does have range. He can be serious, funny, sad, happy, you name it. But sadly, despite this range, it's really hard to look at Austin and think of him as anyone else but Austin. Hell, even in a wig, it's very clear that it's just Steve Austin in a wig. That's not a knock on the guy either. His once in a lifetime persona that he brings is captivating as we saw during his run in WWE, but it's hard to see Steve Austin as anything but the stone cold Texas rattlesnake that we've witnessed for decades now. So it's no surprise that these days, if he's in a movie, he's either playing himself or a parody thereof. He's such a great personality that to be anyone else is almost impossible. And interestingly, I'd say that Kane, aka Glenn Jacobs, had a similar issue during his brief movie career. When you look at a guy like Glenn Jacobs, it's hard not to take in the big hunking brute that lays before you. And as we saw in WWE, that absolutely works. A big powerhouse killer is the perfect role for him to play, and when he applied that to his role in a movie like See No Evil, it really worked. Sure, perhaps it's easy to immediately think of Jacobs as a horrifying monster given his story as Kane in the WWE, but it just seemed like the perfect role for him. However, on the flip side of that statement, with a look like that, it's pretty hard to imagine him playing any other kind of role. But hey, maybe that's a good thing since Jacobs never really seemed to have the acting bug after See No Evil. He wasn't even initially interested in joining the theatrical world of pro wrestling until he suffered a knee injury in his early life, killing his dreams of joining the NFL. He's always loved the physical side of the business more than the theatrics, which is why his most successful runs came when he was a silent, masked, stonewall killer of the roster. Which is why, once he decided that his time in WWE was winding down, he focused on his insurance company and his politics, becoming mayor of Knox County, instead of pursuing something like Hollywood. Next up, we've got another massive player that actually has had a long history with a big red machine, Paul White aka The Big Show. Over his near three decade long career in pro wrestling, Big Show was actually able to showcase some acting talent in the ring. For real, take a look back at his career, and you can see that Big Show might low-key be a really good actor. Not only can he cry on command, a skill that many actors would kill to have, but he's also able to make people look behind the size of the seven footer to see the human emotion in his eyes. He's not just a serious monster. As we've seen in movies like Waterboy and Knucklehead, he can also be quite the comedic character given the opportunity. Hell, even Netflix saw his 
potential and gave him an entire series called The Big Show Show, which received mixed to positive reviews from fans. And it's The Big Show Show where things perhaps fell apart for him in Hollywood. That show was meant to act as his big break, but unfortunately not enough people watched it to get a taste of what he can do, and those who did watch it seemed to forget about it fairly soon after. I still think he can become a new movie star though in these later stages of his life. While he's firmly back in the world of wrestling with his career in AEW, I still think that just one good role could transform people's perception of White as an actor. Alas, he never got his big standout movies like Andre the Giant before him in The Princess Bride, so Big Show's interesting talents have only really been recognized by those watching him in the ring or in some of his more so mediocre comedic stuff like Knucklehead. But while Show continuously pursued acting as a potential career path, Randy Orton's limited time acting seemed to leave him unenthused about the possibility of joining Hollywood anytime soon. Sure, in WWE, Orton has showcased an immense amount of range. He's had completely different characters and gimmicks over the last few decades in WWE, showing up as the young hot start son of a legend, we've seen him turn into a smiley but obnoxious dweeb with the RNN breaking news segment, a brash prick in evolution, a psychopath serial killer assassin with anger issues, and more while always drawing fans in through a subtle facial expression. Like Roman Reigns during his matches as the tribal chief, Orton is a very meticulous and detail-oriented performer. Every subtle motion, every facial tick is intentional and purposeful, and as I sit here, looking back at some of the biggest matches of his career, it's hard to argue that Orton might low-key be one of the best actors to come out of WWE. He's even been given main roles in movies like 12 Rounds 2 Reloaded and The Condemned 2 to unfortunately not much success. Don't get me wrong, the talent is there, but perhaps Orton's career in Hollywood was littered with more issues outside of his control rather than anything. Not only that, but even according to Randy himself, he just never thought of Hollywood as a dream needing to be achieved. Quote, I don't think acting is my passion. I'm not trying to move to Hollywood or New York and be a full-time actor. The way Batista and Cena did it is they used WWE as a jumping board to go on to Hollywood. I'm happy with my place in WWE right now. I see myself with WWE for life. Now, whether he changes his mind or not is up in the air, but if he did decide to pursue acting after his wrestling career, then I don't see why the Viper couldn't slither up the box office charts to become another WWE Hollywood success story. However, as it stands right now, I really don't think that that's something that we could call him. And for our final talking point, we got Randy Orton's former mentor, Triple H, and he clearly saw Hollywood differently than Randy before ultimately planting his feet as the leader of the WWE locker room. As he'll tell you himself, Triple H has has a massive ego. So of course he looks at Hollywood as a goal of his, and right off the bat he got pretty big opportunities when starring in Blade Trinity. He even got himself to appear alongside film legends like Wesley Snipers, Ryan Reynolds, and Remy the Rat himself, Patton Oswald. Sadly though, the movie was littered with production issues that left fans of the series with a very disappointing movie. Panned by critics, Triple H's first outing in Hollywood was a horrible experience. So after the movie, Triple H went back to WWE to act as one of its top superstars for the rest of his career. And during his continuous reign of terror over the company, Hunter would get more film opportunities following WWE's creation of their own movie studio, WWE Films. He was planned to star in a movie written by John Milius, writer of The Apocalypse Now and Conan the Barbarian, but that fell apart after his beloved father-in-law got into a power struggle with John. Of course, Triple H did eventually get his chance to feature as a lead in a few WWE films, this time referring to the chaperone to mostly negative reviews and inside out. No, he didn't play as a figment of a little girl's imagination, but rather as a hard-hitting ex-con who would do anything to protect his family. No, this is not the same type of movie that you're thinking about. Out of his system and his role in WWE only getting bigger, Triple H let go of those aspirations to become the leader of the company that we see today. Sure, he didn't end up as a great actor like some of those around him, including a guy he personally brought up in Batista, but Triple Triple H is a prime example of a WWE superstar whose failure in Hollywood perhaps turned out for the better in his current professional setting. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know of any other WWE superstars you can think of who failed in Hollywood, and if you guys like this video enough, then I might even do a part two. And hey, why not let me know what current members of the WWE roster, in your opinion, could make waves in Hollywood? I know I mentioned Randy Orton, but personally, I also got to see Becky Lynch end up on the big screen one day too. Anyways, subscribe if you enjoyed, and thank you for watching.